This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals like Stalking Hitler's Generals, when Allied commandos launched daring wartime missions to kill or capture German generals, and Secret Societies, organizations that play a far larger role in our everyday lives than most of us realize from the Illuminati to Freemasons and Skull and Bones. Go to curiositystream.com forward slash Mark Felton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for our fans, use the promo code Mark Felton and you will save 25% off, which comes to only fourteen ninety nine a year. That's just $1.25 per month. For the very best in history programming, choose Curiosity Stream. Standing in the Große Tiergarten, the great park in the centre of Berlin, is a fascinating structure. The Soviet War Memorial commemorates 5,000 Red Army soldiers who died during the Battle of Berlin in April to May 1945, a small fraction of the 80,000 who were killed from all over the Soviet Union, including thousands of Ukrainians from Marshal Ivan Konyev's 1st Ukrainian Front. When the city finally surrendered on the 2nd of May 1945, it was a bomb and shell ravage ruin. Allied aerial bombing by the US Army Air Force and the Royal Air Force for years had wrecked vast stretches of the city, and the street fighting, particularly the artillery and rocket fire during the Soviet fight for the city, had also caused immense damage. The Tiergarten, once a fashionable city park in the heart of Berlin's government quarter, was a shell-hold scarred wasteland, its trees burned and plundered for firewood by starving citizens, its equestrian statuary toppled over. The Soviets moved very fast to ensure that the Red Army's sacrifice would not be forgotten in a city divided by agreement into four Allied occupation zones, British, American, French and Soviet. Though the Tiergarten was within the British zone, the Allied control commission that ruled Berlin readily agreed that the Soviets could construct a memorial there to commemorate many of those who had fallen in the final and bitter fight for the city centre. The memorial is an example of recycling, for the stone used in its construction was taken from the ruins of Hitler's once impressive Reich Chancellery on nearby Wilhelmstrasse. Designer Mikhail Goritz created a memorial building in the form of a curved stoa, an ancient Greek covered walkway or portico seen on many classical public buildings, topped by a large bronze statue of a Red Army soldier. Below an inscription reads, Eternal glory to heroes who fell in battle with the German fascist invaders for the freedom and independence of the Soviet Union. The slabs in front of the memorial bear the names of senior officers killed in the Battle of the Reichstag, while the names of lower-ranking soldiers are recorded on the columns behind. Landscape gardens were laid out, and the memorial was conspicuous for many years as the surrounding buildings remained in a ruined or damaged condition. The bodies of 2,200 Soviet soldiers lie buried behind the hedges either side of the memorial. The gardens are flanked by two T-34 tanks set atop plinths. These tanks are the older T-34-76 types, which were largely replaced in Soviet service by the T-34-85 in 1945. The two tanks on the memorial were probably surplus to requirements. And two ML-20 152mm gun howitzers. These weapons undoubtedly veterans of the Battle of Berlin. The local Berlin population necessarily had a different relationship with this memorial. Many called it the Tomb of the Unknown Rapist due to the behaviour of many Soviet soldiers towards German women in the weeks after Berlin surrendered. However, up to 1994, when the Russian garrison in Berlin was withdrawn, honour guards from the Soviet 6th Separate Guards Motor Rifle Brigade stood on watch outside the memorial 24-7. Behind the memorial are guard houses. This meant that during the height of the Cold War, armed Soviet soldiers stood guard within the British sector of Berlin. The memorial became a focus for protests against the Soviet Union and later the Russian Federation. 
In 1961, when the Berlin Wall was being built, West Berliners tried to attack the memorial, and British troops protected it from vandalism. In 1970, a German neo-Nazi opened fire on Soviet honor guards, severely wounding one of them. It was vandalized in 2010, and a petition launched in 2014 during the Crimean crisis to remove the T-34 tanks, which were seen by many as evidence of Russian provocation and militarism. But the German government has consistently stood by the 1990 treaty on the final settlement with respect to Germany, which includes agreements to protect World War II Soviet war memorials. Since the end of the Cold War, the memorial has been administered by the city of Berlin. On VE Day, 8th of May, each year, wreath-laying ceremonies are conducted there. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.